Hi Tango Dancer, in this week video we are going to share with you the best three tips for tango music interpretation. Today our guest teacher is Corina Herrera. Uh, Corina Herrera is a tango teacher from Argentina. Uh, she danced both roles and we love the way that she danced, the way that she expressed the music. So uh, she's going to share with you the best tips that she can give you for you to, to improve that interpretation in the tango music. So great. Uh, the idea is, of course, that I cannot tell you how to interpret the music because this is very personal. What I can do is share with you what the elements that I use when I, I interpret the music. Okay, so let's see the first one. So, uh, about the tip number one, the idea is to work with the upper body, see, with the different tonicity that we use for uh, express one quality or the other one. For example, if we want to do something more um, sharp, see, the idea is that we will increase the quantity of tone. For example, if I want to do something here to play with the, with the rhythm, uh, it's not the same if I relax my tone, like if I want to do, for example, this type of ocho, where I will use, for example, for the melody, for interpreting the melody, because it's more, uh, the movement inside of my body is bigger, see, it has a lot of space. Instead of, if I compact, if we compact, see, and we, uh, we go directly to the hip, of course, you can, if you have a partner, you can practice with your partner. If not, you can practice with the wall, see? But the idea is to feel that from the ground, when we compact more the body and we increase the quantity of tone, it's more direct to the hip. So I can follow more the rhythm here. If I relax more, my body, the movement has more space in my body, and maybe I can follow the melody. Maybe you are wondering uh, what, what means to compact the body. So, Corina, what, what, what do you mean when you say that you are compacting your body to express more rhythmic music? I think that a very good reference is that it's our joints. For example, when I'm talking about compact the body, what I can see is that my joints are not moving so much. It's like everything is going to my center, see? Uh, in, in instead of when I um, release more, I can move my joints more without losing the presence, yes, but this gives me the possibility to move more. In a set of, when I compact, again, I lock my joints a little bit and I increase my, the quantity of tone to have a um, result uh, more direct to the movement of the hip and more rhythmical, we can say. Okay, tip number two. Uh, I think that Mm, the change of weight is, is one of the most important thing because when we are changing weight, depending on the way that we are changing weight, uh, we can maybe follow more the rhythm or we can follow more the, more the melody. So the idea is that normally, this is my, of course, my opinion, when I try to follow the rhythm, see, I try to change my weight directly, see, from one side to the other side. Pam, pam more direct. If we talk about technique a little bit, uh, what I can say is that when I'm um, receiving the weight of my body in the whole uh, foot and I go directly to my metatars, I can change weight fast, very fast, see? So the idea is that I pass, I roll in my standing leg in my foot directly to the metatars to change weight directly. So for example, for the backward step, I will roll to my heel. So. I'm trying to put in my change of weight the accent. Boom, pam, boom, boom. Forward or back, no? Doesn't matter what I'm doing, I'm trying to really arrive. Boom, pam, pam. Instead of when I want to follow the melody, for example, I really, I'm taking care so much in the way that I'm stepping, see? The idea is to not put any accent in the moment that I'm stepping. The idea is to, the same idea of rolling, see? Now, taking more time, using my base, taking more time at the moment that I'm transferring my weight, see? So I'm not putting any accent. So the moment of the change of weight is very important. So it will not be the same if I transfer direct, boom, boom, that if I want to sustain my change of weight, see? To have another quality, more, with more suspension, let's say, okay? So I have this possibility. Change very soft and take a lot of time 
for the changing of, of the weight or more sharp, boom, boom, with more accent. Tip number three, about the rhythm. The idea is that um, when we play, normally when we play with a rhythm, uh, the common thing is to play with this one, two, three. In many situations in tango we have the one, two, three. For example, the cross, one, two, three. I'm doing the follower roll, but for leader it's exactly the same. It's we are in the five, one, two, three, no? In the moment of the cross. Or we have, for example, the ocho cortado. One, two, three, pausa, one, two, three. For leader is the same. One, two, three, pausa, one, two, three. We have many situations. The cross, the um, turn, sorry. One, two, three, or to the other side. One, two, three, the acceleration. The turn, maybe with a, a lapis, I don't know, one, two, three, okay? Um, the corrida, for example, one, two, three. So it's very common for us to use in, in, in the dance, in, the, in some sequences, the one, two, three. So now the idea is to change a little bit that one, two, three, and um, keep the one and the three, and change the, the two, the number two. So we can do one, two, three, or we can do one, two, three. For example, in the cross, I put this example, but it's exactly the same for both rolls, okay? Can be one, two, three, that is the normal. It can be one, two, three, see, second option, or also one, two, three. So, you know that every time that you play with a one, two, three, we can play with a syncopa, with a rhythm. One, two, three, boom. One, two, three. Or one, two, three, boom. One, two, three. Let's analyze the ocho cortado for the leader, for example. One, two, three, one, two, three. Or one, sorry, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or one, two, three, one, two, three. Three. And from here we can combine. But it's important this, that every time that we have a one, two, three, we can play moving a little bit this number two. Okay, I'll show you in the music what I mean with this about the syncopa. As you can see, I was playing with the, with the sequences that I showed you before, playing with the syncopa, in the ocho cortado, with the cross, and with the turn. Uh, now I will show you combining the other two tips all together. Remember that these three tips will help to you to express yourself more with the music and of course that is very important to know the music that we dance, so it's very important also to, to practice with a song that you know very well, you know, and the idea is listen, listen the music because we dance with the music. Uh, so I hope that this, uh, it was useful for you, for your practice and thanks for watching. Thank you very much Corina and thank you for the tips. 
And yes, it's important to understand that musicality is for you as an individual dancer, no? Uh, you want to be musical as a leader, or as a follower, and to understand how to express the tango music. So thank you very much, okay. Corina. If you want to keep learning with us, uh, if you want to uh, receive a new video every week, we are going to put the link below this video, and you can sign up to our mailing list, and you will receive a new video every week to keep improving your tango dancing. Thank you very much for watching and please keep learning and keep sharing your dancing because the world of tango needs your embrace. Bye.